everybody, Max here giving you a bit of a Forest versus Swansea preview on Talk Forest TV. Smash that subscribe button, share the link, get involved, make some comments. Um, I think we're all still coming down from a fabulous result away at Fulham. Probably still not come down, probably just, uh, you know, I don't know anybody that's done any work um, last day or two and tomorrow. Um, no work's going to get done by any Forest fans. They might as well just uh, write a cheque and tell everybody to like, uh, you know, take the weekend off, enjoy yourself, boys and girls, because we're in for one hell of a ride over the next nine, what, nine days with three games in and all sorts of shenanigans, all sorts of twists and turns and ups and downs are going to happen over the course of the next three games and probably in between all those three games as well. It's going to be like being at the World Cup. It's going to be absolutely bonkers. And what I want to say to every Forest fan, one thing I want to say to every Forest fan, enjoy that, enjoy it. So we haven't been here for a long time and uh, we're in such a position. We've come so far with the nation's darlings. Everybody's talking about us. Forget Derby, forget Liverpool. I don't even know how they did in the European Cup tonight or West Ham and all that. We're the talk of the town. Our players are the talk of the town. Three players in the Championship Team of the Year and Young Player of the Year. Unprecedented. Unprecedented. The only reason Cooper didn't get it, the only reason McKenna didn't get in, is because it would just be embarrassing to have a team full of Forest players and Forest manager and, you know, what about everybody else? So, yeah, amazing, amazing. Once again, Fulham game was fantastic. I thought, Everybody, everybody was fantastic. The fans were fantastic. Speaker Boy was fantastic. Um, Keith Stroud was fantastic. Well played, Keith Stroud. Let's let's stand up, give a round of applause for Keith Stroud for not not bowing to any of the Fulham shenanigans. Fulham that represent everything that's wrong with with modern football. With a manager with a hundred thousand pound watch. And, uh, and players that throw themselves down and complain at the referee because we've taken a quick free kick or, you know, just ridiculous. But anyway, um, big game on Saturday. Um, looking forward to a bit of banter with the Swansea fans. Looking forward to Swansea fans um, coming to see that, um, that negative, boring um, football with no goals and no excitement in that they promised us we'd get with Steve Cooper. That turned out well, didn't it? You know, um, classic bit of uh, be careful what you wish for, boys. Um, but I think Swansea, interesting team to play at this stage of the season. You know, uh, nothing to play for. And sometimes that means teams are on the beach and don't care. Sometimes it means they play um, with freedom, express themselves, um, try things. And I think that's probably what they did, exactly what we saw in their um, home game against Bournemouth the other day. Express themselves, scored three goals, well played Cyrus Christie. Um, banging in the third one, I think. Um, but also, no steal, no balls, no backbone, no fight because there's nothing to fight for. Then Bournemouth came back. So, I think um, early goal was probably important. Um, making a good start is important. Um, but another message for the Forest fans if we don't make a good start, if it's a bit nervous, we've really got to get behind the boys. Um, that That's where we make, like, we need to not be turning up on Saturday expecting us to win. Uh, we need to be turning up making more noise than we did for the Liverpool game, more noise than we made for the Leicester game, more noise than we made for all the rest of the games put together. And we need to be wearing our lucky shirts, our lucky socks, our lucky pants. We need to be going through the same turnstile that we've been through for all the last, what, 16 home games. Um, this, this is our role to play. Control the controllables. That's what we can control. I don't want, I don't want to hear anybody saying that they're wearing a different shirt or they're doing anything different today than last week or on Saturday than last week or the week before or the week before that or the week before that. That's our job. That's what we can do. And then we can make some bloody noise. Okay, so let's do that. Let's have it. Um, I see there's a few injury doubts for Saturday. Um, I, don't, I think they'll be fine. I think probably Zinconagel is the one that looks like looked like he might have. looked like he was getting a few knocks and um, knee knacks, never, never a good one. But I wouldn't be surprised if they're all playing. Um, I was surprised to read that Sam Surridge um, is potentially injured. Um, big thanks again to Tony Lloyd, Wizards of Dribble and Stoke City Football Club for selling us Sam. Um, I reckon probably one of the best, 
best buys of the season. Um, and I think he looked really surprised when he was when he was subbed off. Um, looked a bit confused as to why why he went off, um, which says to me there wasn't any serious injury there. Um, but if he doesn't play, um, obviously Steve Cooper has the next man up mentality. You know, I was having a bit of chat with my brother and my mates, um, Connor and Ant and Moon about like who the next man up might be. And there were some suggestions that it might be uh, Dale or Will Swan from the from the under twenty threes and twenty ones and stuff. Um, but I think that I think we saw against Fulham what next man up would be. I think it would be um, uh, Brennan playing up the middle and probably um, Joe, so Joe Lolly uh, maybe starting. Uh, maybe Alex Myton starting. Um, or uh, or like a role for Laria that I thought looked really well when he came on and interesting that you know Spence looked absolutely fine playing playing left wing back, um, so I'm not I'm not too worried because goals are coming from all over the pitch, um, you know Ryan's got what nine or ten goals, Brennan's got sixteen goals, um, I, I'm not I'm not worried about where goals are coming from because we're not reliant on one player. Um, it's a shame about. Lewis Graven being injured, uh, probably been out for the se- rest of the season, probably. Um, I think we have to remember that Lewis got us where we are now, or where, got us to where we were in a position where we buy Keenan Davis and we buy Sam Surridge in January. And, um, you know, and that's, we, that's just kicking on. But if it wasn't for his goals, we wouldn't have been rocketing up the table and we wouldn't have been in that position, perhaps where the owners say, "Yeah, you know, spend that money to get those players." So, on the other hand, I think um, maybe a bit of a blessing in disguise, um, because I think um, I think Steve Cooper is tempted to play Lewis in that midfield role, in that deeper role, and although he's done well uh, when he's come on to do that. Um, I'm not convinced it's the best use of Lewis and uh, and nor that he's the best person in that role. Um, so I think it avoids that. Um, what else have we got? Um, Saturday, um, obviously Blackburn play Bournemouth. Bournemouth play Blackburn at Blackburn at Ewood Park where there'll probably be a massive crowd of like 12,000 or something like that. Um, I'm, I'm really struggling with like how few people are going to watch some of the other so-called like top eight teams that clearly demonstrates to me they're not ready. They don't have the fan base or the, they're not on the hotbed of football that everybody makes out places like Middlesbrough to be and they got 19,000 um, in a massive game against Cardiff at home the other day where we're getting like 28, 29 staying out every game. Like what's all that about? Um Best fans in the world, can't be bothered, can't be bothered to support the team. Same as like the 10,000 that's missing from, from Derby, supposedly fighting to the end, but then they only turn up when they think it's the, the last game before they go out of business. Um, but I think it's a big, big opportunity. If we can beat Swansea, I'm back in Blackburn to to beat Bournemouth. Um, I think um, the stage is set for Ben Brereton Diaz, um, the darling of Chilean football. Um, check out Chilean uh, Chilean TV ads featuring Ben Burrett and Diaz um, advertising everything from Coca-Cola to um, Yunnan's cooking. Um, he's absolutely loved. He's been brilliant. Uh, he's back from injury. They're going for it. Um, I'm, I'm predicting that Forest beat Swansea 3-0, um, Blackburn beat Bournemouth 2-0, and uh, we go in to Tuesday's game in second place and with a goal difference of plus five. Um, and we will try and win, but we don't lose to Bournemouth is the key. Um, so there you go. See you down there, boys. Also great to see Trent Navigation is fully open, so hideous having to queue outside Trent Navi to get a beer before and after the game because they've been doing the work, um, doing up the, the beer garden, doing it upside. Great pub. Um, support it. Local beer, local owners. Um, local people, and you get to walk past the uh, the the away fans in the uh, in the um, the the county bar, the the broken wheelbarrow um, as you go past, which is always fun. So see you there. We're gonna win. We need everybody to get behind the team, um, and we just gotta go for it. You Reds, peace. <laughs>